everything Deshaun touches turns to gold. I've had the great pleasure and fortune to win many titles. He was an exceptional captain. It was him who pushed the team on to glory. All the clubs I went to were spirits. The great leader and the perfect captain. Deschamps was a true warrior, someone you could always count on. It's magnificent. You wish it could last forever. Is that negative? No. What does that mean, a water carrier? For some, it's an insult. For him, it's a strength. I carry water for many players. So what? You need all sorts in a team. It doesn't bother me. It means being at the service of the more creative players. The perfect role in the French team. There were some players who were there just to show off. That wasn't me. I just made sure I was indispensable. When he played, we played better. Teams don't win things with just the Maradonas and the Messis. You also need players who carry great energy for those around them. And that was one of Didier Deschamps' amazing strengths. I wasn't a player who'd win the match. But for the vast majority of coaches, the first name on the team sheet was mine. Eric gave him the old water carrier, and that stuck. But he had a lot more ability than just carrying water, put it that way. I was drawn towards football, but I took part in all kinds of sports. I played rugby because I'm from the Basque country. I did cross country as well. I enjoyed running. That became clear later on the football pitch where it certainly benefited me. But the round ball is the one I spent most time with. When I was younger, I played up front. And some seasons, I scored more than 60 goals. You wouldn't have thought so now, given my limitations. There were about 10 clubs who were interested in me. I chose not. It was 600 kilometers away, so I found myself having to manage on my own, aged 15. It wasn't ideal, but I'd made my decision and it didn't worry me. It was a lot tougher for my parents to deal with. Deschamps and fellow youngster Marcel Desailly joined a Nantes squad that included more established stars, the likes of Argentinian World Cup winner Jorge Burrichaga. I certainly paid great attention to them. At that time, the youngsters had to raise a hand to speak. I wouldn't even do that. I guess they accepted me for who I was. And I worked as hard as I could. I fed off their experience. An emerging reputation on France's west coast led to an international call-up for Deschamps against Yugoslavia in 1989. That had always been one of my targets. And it all happened very quickly. Once I was there and I'd got my foot in the door, I was on a roll. And Michel Platini continued to show faith in me. Uh, 
He knew where and how to position not just himself, but everyone else on the pitch. He knew how to organize the team and how to communicate that. And that's a rare quality in a player. He made himself essential in the midfield. The tenacious midfielder simultaneously found a new home on France's Mediterranean coast with champions Olympic Marseille and their equally ambitious president, Bernard Tapie. Nantes were having serious financial problems and selling me allowed them to survive the next few years that followed. It wasn't something that was planned, uprooting from a comfortable, familiar environment. But the prospects of Marseille was exciting in every way. And it's not as if I wasn't ready for it. He was a very old head on young shoulders. Sensible lad, you know. Didn't do anything out of the ordinary. Didn't come in with a loud shirt on a car where you'd go, wow, what's that? They really were a great group. I did feel uncomfortable around Bernard Tappy, though. I couldn't really be myself in his company. Wherever you went, he was there. Tapie sent Deschamps on a season-long loan to Bordeaux to develop his game. And upon returning to Marseille, his growing prominence helped the club to the 92 French Championship. I felt more at ease. When I first got there, I did participate, even though the season was already in full swing. But when you play the whole season and you win the title at the end of it, you feel completely at home. What I liked was he'd hunt the ball down in the midfield, win it back and pass it right away. I needed the ball to move around very quickly and simply. And that's what Didier brought. It was a dog. Basically, it was go and break it up and give it to the ball to Waddle, give the ball to Papa and give the ball to Biddy Pelly. You give the ball to them. Job done. He could play. As soon as Marseille signed me, there was no question of me not making my mark there. With the sale of Papa, Deschamps' open and articulate nature at the Stade Velodrome made him an obvious choice to captain the defending champions. Even Jean-Pierre, as he left very publicly for AC Milan, told me he could see me get in the armband. Didier was so vocal, he would round the players up, mobilize them, tell them how to position themselves. It was just something that came naturally to him. He was a great leader, even though he was still young. A typical captain who led the team by example. He gave everything, every game. I believe, and I've said this many times, you don't just click your fingers one morning and say, right, I'm going to be a leader. I was born with it, and I've never been a follower. I've always liked being the one who spurs others on. By May 93, Marseille were bidding once again to become the first French team to lift the European Cup, this time under their new 23-year-old leader. It was the mighty Milan. They were a huge... Their objective, for the directors, the coaches, to be crowned kings of Europe. Again, it was an absolutely crazy feeling to conquer the overwhelming favourites Milan in the final 1-0. Wonderful. It had a resounding impact throughout Europe. That victory over the Italians really gave us kudos and open new doors. It's just one of those things. No big deal. But the elation was short-lived. Marseille and their president Tapi were banned from European competition and subsequently relegated for their part in a match-fixing scandal that rocked France. Clearly, they were painful days to live through. Therefore, it was time for me, as it was for others, to take off for pastures new. I had several clubs interested in me, one of which was Juventus. 
Deschamps was navigating similarly tricky waters with France too. The group stage failure at Euro 92 was quickly overshadowed by the unmitigated disaster of the qualification campaign for the 94 World Cup. It will always be the worst. The worst thing that's ever happened to me as a professional. Failing to qualify in those circumstances where we needed just a single point from two home games against Israel and Bulgaria. It was traumatic at the time, yes, but it served me well for the future. That game taught a number of players a fundamental lesson in how not to do things. It was a shuddering jolt, one that left me all but ready to walk away. The move to Juventus was a timely opportunity for Deschamps to put his career back on track. They had suffered since the Platini years. They had experienced great success, but were now going through harder times. The management had changed too, with Marcello Lippi coming in, so there was a new coach with new ideas. I wasn't the captain, but he knew I was a driving force as a player. Wherever he goes, he wins, and we realised that very quickly. My contribution came over the course of a whole season. When we were playing the 4-3-3 system, the team had a 12th player on the pitch, as he was everywhere he is. They knew they could count on me behind them all night long. The one thing Juventus couldn't count on with Didier Deschamps was goals. <laughs> it was really hard for Deschamps to score goals. They were rare because he had square feet. <laughs> I wasn't expected to score. There are others who take care of that. But when it's rare, it's even better. <laughs> I remember he once scored a very important goal, the second against Parma, in a match that decided the 94-95 league title. Yeah, it was, what's his name? Roberto Baggio, who played it into me. As I came into the box, I hit it with my left foot into the far top corner. If that doesn't make you a champion, I don't know what does. No, <laughs> it's The 95 League and Cup double were proof of the midfielders settling in Italy. And 12 months later, Deschamps was reunited with a trophy he'd already lifted three years earlier as Juventus overcame Ajax in the Champions League final. At Marseille, there had been an outpouring of joy, a real fizz. But at Juventus, it was normal. That bothered me a little bit. There was a sense of satisfaction and achievement, but it was just seen as the norm. Marcello Lippi was turning Juventus back into winners. Another coach with a similar brief was Aimé Jacquet, the French national boss, who identified Deschamps as the man to lead Les Bleus out of the recent darkness and into the 1996 European Championships. Aimé made me captain before the competition. Once Didier had been given the captain's armband, he was never going to give it up. It's always important for a coach to have someone like Deschamps as their captain, because three quarters of their problems would already be sorted out thanks to Deschamps' reading of situations. For the first time, we felt we could achieve something and that we could hold our own in major international tournaments. We made it to the semi-finals, so that was something concrete we could build on. Aimé Jacquet used that as the foundation. We effectively started preparing for the 98 World Cup at Euro 96. Deschamps would shortly be united with his French teammate at club level in Turin, the rising star Zinedine Zidane. We had a brilliant relationship because we were very close on the pitch. But obviously, if I touched the ball ten times, nine times I'd pass it to him. We'd had to fight for the Italian championship right to the final day, and we were on our last legs. Dortmund hadn't played for two months, and they were able to do their homework on us. That's what hurt the most. I'm one of them. It was infuriating. 
Deschamps didn't have to stew for too long. His attention swiftly turned to the pressure of leading the home nation in France's first appearance at a World Cup for 12 years. La pression pour moi c'est négatif. For me, pressure is a negative thing. I prefer to talk about positivity. Pressure gets you nowhere. It doesn't do you any good. What you can feed off is adrenaline and the excitement of achieving something. We knew that both individually and collectively, we were strong. But having spent two years only playing friendly matches, we needed a competition to tell us where we were as a team. Between 1996 and 98, Deschamps and I had arguments in virtually every match. We were always quarrelling, because I was France's attacking leader. And I wanted us to press very high, and Didier, as the leader of the midfield, wanted us all to drop back and defend. By 1998, we'd struck a balance whereby we pressed very high and we all got back quickly. The French began well, ending the group stage as the leading scorers, despite not playing a recognised striker. We had a very solid defensive unit and we built from the back, as we had great quality too. We had the two full-backs, Lizarazu and Turam, who were constantly up and down, plus the two midfielders who were keen to push forward, whether it was Emmanuel Petit or Christian Carambou. Zizou, obviously, Yuri. So it wasn't by accident that we were the team that scored the most goals. We weren't the best team in the world, but we were the team that could change tactics in just five minutes, which other sides were unable to do. That made a big difference. When the World Cup kicked off, there was a gust of wind pushing us forward, and it was superb. We came through the group, then we got past Paraguay, Italy, then Croatia, until we found ourselves in the dream final against Brazil in Paris. France sailed the wind of national fervour all the way to the final, where Deschamps' calm head would be crucial. The moment we truly realised was the journey from Clairefontaine to the Stade de France. The streets were overflowing. It still gives me goosebumps. You have Brazil in front of you. It's not the ideal team to face, but you're at home. You tell yourself, this is your night. The evening began with controversy and confusion over the inclusion of Brazilian striker Ronaldo, who had reportedly been taken ill before kickoff. He wasn't there, and to an extent we saw that as a lack of respect for us, a sign that they were trying to pull the wool over our eyes. We were relaxed, which was important, but we were highly focused on what lay ahead. Nevertheless, Brazil had great individuals. We obviously had our own. But we had to be stronger than them. It's all about the team as a unit, collective strength. With a 2-0 lead at half-time, Deschamps' side stood on the brink of immortality. Deep down, we knew we'd already won. But we had another 45 minutes to deal with. Petit's third confirmed a deserved victory for the French, who had scored more and conceded fewer goals than any other team at France 98. I was transported back in time. I had flashbacks to the World Cups of my childhood, 1978 and 82. And then you say to yourself, it's us. And that's incredible. It makes you laugh to watch others lift the World Cup. And then to think that it was now my turn, in France, at home, in front of all my friends and family. It's the pinnacle. To see Deschamps standing there in the footsteps of Maradona and Pelé, I thought, this isn't bad. Football is so powerful. <laughs> The victory of 98 meant that we as footballers now had to live our lives out in the media. We were now public property.
Back in Italy, the name of Deschamps was now written in Juventus' rich history. But in early 99, Deschamps chose to leave, opting for a season in the Premier League with Chelsea. I needed a change of scene. The directors didn't want me to go, but I'd been there five years, I'd given a great deal, and I wanted something different. The fact that Viali, who'd been a teammate of mine, was the manager and coach. And I won the cup, the beautiful cup, at Wembley with half the stadium shouting, come on, Blues. The FA Cup was the 15th trophy of Deschamps' career. In the summer of 2000, the Blues of France reconvened under new coach Roger Lemaire, aiming to become just the second team to be both world and European champions at the same time. Every team was strong, but we knew we were going to win the tournament. We were sure of it because the team was particularly good. Tactically, we were exceptional. Djorkaev's goals helped propel the French towards a final showdown with Italy in Rotterdam. We didn't play well, and then they upset us by taking the lead. I came on for the last four minutes, and I didn't think I'd be able to change the game or bring anything to the team, because it was so tough, so tight. We had practically zero chances. There was only one player who believed during that match, and that was Deschamps. He had the approach and the temperament to say, no, we fight until the end. Perhaps some didn't have the belief. The only dog, and I call him a dog because he's the one that barked constantly, was Deschamps. <laughs> I believed in it right to the end. It's in my nature. Italy are less than 90 seconds away. The Italians seem to think they were already champions. We were crowned European champions. 2000 was the pinnacle. I don't think any other France side has played as well as that one in 2000. It wasn't certain we'd win it, but what was certain was that his mind was made up. I'll play at Euro 2000, and then that's it. I knew it was the end for me. I'd made my decision. I'd given a lot. We could go no further than being world and European champions. Deschamps quit Les Bleus after a then record 103 caps. And following a season in Spain with Valencia, the game was finally up for the 32-year-old. I picked up an injury. I was hampered by it. And it's as if the emergency exit light was flashing. I decided to stop because my body was starting to let me down. The man once dubbed the water carrier has lifted more than enough silverware to answer the critics. What he excelled at was being there for others. He had a great ability to motivate and inspire those around him. A tremendous role model. He was a great teammate, a great fighter. I have very fond memories of Deschamps. It's not a job. I never looked upon it as a job. It's fabulous. Being a successful footballer is magnificent. The best life I could have had. C'était ma première vie.